Welcome once again to ASM North Online Math Class. In this video, we are going to discuss uh, a very nice topic in mathematics, which is the application of set uh, theory, Venn diagram. Um, it is called a Venn diagram in the sense that it is named after the English mathematician that invented it. And the name of this English mathematician is John Venn. Okay? So, um, in the Venn diagram, the rectangles are used to represent the universal set. Y circles are used to represent the subset of the universal uh, set. Okay, uh, we are going to exemplify this uh, Venn diagram using this question on the board. We are, we are told that in a class of uh, 40 students, each student offer at least one of math and physics. If 20 students offer physics and 26 offer mathematics, what number of students offer both subjects? How many students offer physics uh, only? Many people will start to ponder over this question thinking that it is somehow incorrect in the sense that 20 students that offer physics and 26 that offer mathematics, that the sum is now more than the number of students you have in the class. Because when I sum 20 and 26, I'm getting 46, which is more than 40. But they don't know that some students are busy body, they, off, they can offer more than one subject at the same time. So someone who offers uh, physics and math, you don't need to count that person as double uh, student. That is the mistake students make here. For instance, um, I'm a lover of uh, Manchester United, so I'll use the club as an example. Um, then, let's say Chelsea Football Club, Chelsea FC. FC. Now, assuming you have uh, you ask some students question to uh, list down the the club, the fan, their favorite club. Let's say uh, Ebuka will like uh, Manchester United. Henry will like Manchester United. Esumnofu will like Manchester United, and uh, uh, let's say Kaka will like Manchester United. Then for Chelsea, if you ask uh, the, the student's question again, how many of you like Chelsea? We might see Kaka right, liking Chelsea. We might see uh, uh, Franklin. Okay, let's say Favor. Uh, then again, we say Ifani and uh, Amina, for instance. Now, if you are not asked to find the total number of students that we are interrogated about their favorite club, some persons might make mistake and count it as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, thinking that there are 8 students, without knowing that a particular student offered uh, both uh, or liked both clubs, Kaka. For the fact that Kaka is liking Chelsea and Manu at the same time, it doesn't make him two persons. So you don't need to act him twice. This is what happens here that made the sum of students for physics and math to be more than the total because some are double counted. Okay? So now let us solve this question and see clearly how this problem can be tackled. Okay. Right now, uh, the universal set, which is the total number of students in the class, is you, and they are 40. Here, I'll use M to represent mathematics, i use P to represent uh, physics. Therefore, cardinality of mathematics, that is, the total number of students for math, is equivalent to 26. The cardinality of uh, physics, total number of students for physics, they are 20 in number. We are asked to get the number of students that offer both subjects. Therefore, the number of students for physics and the mathematics we don't know. We might use letter X to represent uh, the number of students that offer physics and mathematics at the same uh, time. Then after this, we have to represent the information in a Venn diagram to assist us to solve the question effectively. So the universal set is the Venn diagram, is the rectangle, which is 40. Um, now let's say that this person is uh, math why the other person is uh, physics. Now, I made it in such a way that they are meeting at a particular point because the question revealed to us that we should get the number of students for both subjects, which means they are intersecting at a particular point. And this point they are intersecting is what we call uh, X. 
So if here is x, um, the number of students for mathematics, 26. I'm not going to just write 26 here like that. If I do that, I'm double counting because already x has been part of this uh, mathematics, which I'm going to subtract. We have to remove it again. Just like Kaka liked Mass and uh, uh, liked Chelsea and Man U. You don't need to count him twice, you need to subtract him. The same thing is applicable to physics. Physics students are 20 in number, so an x is already part of it. You have to subtract again. Then the sum of everything here gives us the universal set of 40. So we write that 26 minus x plus uh, x plus 20 minus x is equivalent to the universal set of uh, 40. Okay? Then we have 26 plus 20, we give us a uh, 46. Minus x plus x is 0. Remaining minus x here is equivalent to 40. Solving, we have that minus x is a 40 minus a 46. 40 minus 46. So we have that minus x is equivalent to 40 minus 46. We give us minus 6. Minus cancels out. We have that our x is equivalent to 6. Hence, it implies that C students offer both subjects. Therefore, here is 6. Now you can see that 26 minus x, which is already 6, we give us uh, 20. And uh, 20 minus x, which is 6, we give us uh, 14. This is the actual thing happening here. You can see that 20 plus 6 is 26, plus 14, we give us our 40. So we have resolved this con uh, uh, confusion. So now, the question asks us again to get how many students offer physics only. The number of students that offer physics only is just 14, because we have removed the number of students which offer both math and physics. So when you remove C, which is X plus this 20, we are getting a 14. Hence, 14 students offer physics only. Assuming you are asked to get the number of students that offer math only, it is just 20 because we've removed the busybody, which is 6. It is both in math and physics. So just remove that element that is part of the boat. You get the one that offers only a particular subject. So let us get more example and solve for proper comprehension of the subject matter. Okay, let's continue with the second question. We are told that a number of market women sell at least one of yam, plantain, and maize. 12 sell maize, 10 sell yam, and 14 sell plantain. 5 sell plantain and maize, 4 sell yam and maize, 2 sell yam and plantain only. Why 3 sell all the 3 items? How many students are in the group? This is a popular jump question. It's a jump question. Okay, and it's very tricky, so, but you listen attentively to see analysis and see that no matter how the question comes in Venn diagram, that it is always very simple. To do that, you have to first of all divide here so that there will be enough space to tackle this. Now, solution. We have that there are the number of market women we don't know, so our universal set is X. That's what we are looking for. Then, the, I'll use P for plantain, Y for yam, and the M for maize. So, two of cell maize. Hence, the number of maize is equivalent to 12. Uh, 10 cell yam and uh, 10 cell yam. So, number of people selling yam is equivalent to 10. And 14 cell plantain. Number of people selling uh, plantain is now uh, 14. Five cell plantain and maize, that is uh, plantain intersection maize. So number of plantain intersection maize, we give us uh, five cell plantain and maize is five. Again, four cell yam and maize. Number of yam and maize is four. And again, two cell yam and plantain only. Mind this word only, yam and plantain only is equivalent to 2. So the word only should be noted. Why 3? Sell all the 3 items. So number of yam intersection, plantain intersection, maize, that is the 3 item. They say that they are 3 in number. Okay, then let us draw a Venn diagram to represent this information because it is this Venn diagram that will help us to tackle it. 
Now remember, this is three sets. We are having three items there, as you can see. So, universal set, I don't know. The first, the second, and the third, they are three in number. So let me say this is for plantain, this is for maize, and this is for yam. You have to label them accordingly. Um, in tackling questions like this, you must begin from the three. We are the three of them are intersecting. And we are told here that the number for three of them is just three. So three persons. So coming here, I'll write uh, three for the intersection of the three of them. Then after that, you go to two, two intersections. So let's begin with, uh, uh, we have plantain and maize. Plantain and maize is this point, And we are told that they are five. I will not just come here and write five. If I write five, I'm wrong. Because three is already part of it. So I'll just say five minus this three that is here, it will now be two. So instead of writing five here, because plantain and maize, they are five. But three is already part of plantain, is already part of maize. So you don't write it that way. You have to <coughs> remove uh, this three from five. It will give you two. Then yam and maize, yam and maize is this point. Look at where yam and maize are meeting at this point. And we are told that yam and maize, that they are four in number. Instead of writing four here, I've known that here is already three. I will say four minus three, which will give me one. So I'm writing just one here. Okay, after that, we have yam and plantain only, which is two. I'm not supposed to say two minus three here. Not because two is smaller than three, but because they said only. Whenever you hear the word only, it means that they have already done the subtraction, leaving behind only what they are talking about. Unlike other ones, like here, no only, no only, but here there is only. So this only is telling us that they have already done the subtraction, leaving us behind with what we want. Okay? So you just write two here because of that only. Don't go and subtract again. Then having uh, done for two, two sets, the next thing you do is to go into three, three sets. And uh, let's begin with plantain. Plantain, how many are there? Plantain are 14 in number. But you don't just write 14 here. If you write 14, it's wrong. Look at plantain, the circle of plantain here. This is plantain. These numbers came into it, 2, 3, 2. So 2 plus 3 plus 2 is uh, 7. But plantain is 14. Don't just write 14, but you say 14 minus that 7 that you've added, it will give you 7. Then we go for maize. Maize, we are told that the maize are 12 in number. But look at the circle of maize here. This number 2, 3, 1 came into it. So if we add 2 and 3, you are getting 5 plus 1, 6. So you say maize 12 minus that 6 that came into it. You have just 6. Then we have yam. Yam are 10 in number. Then go to yam. Add up everything that you see in yam. In yam, I have 2, 3, 1. 2 plus 3 is 5 plus 1 is 6. But yam is 10 in number. So 10 minus 6 will give us uh, 4. So we carefully analyze this. Therefore, how many students that are in the group means the universal set, which is the sum of everything here. So we have uh, 7 plus 2 is 9. 9 plus 3 is uh, 12, 14, 18, 19, and 25. So when you add up here, you are getting 25. Therefore, the number of uh, um, students, not even students, how many women? So the number of women in the group are 25. They are just 25 in number. So you see that careful analysis and application of Venn diagram will help us to solve a lot of problems that pertains to uh, Venn diagram or sets, or even real life problem, because this is wonderful. See the analysis we've just done now with the use of uh, Venn diagram. So the mathematician, English mathematician John Venn did a wonderful thing by inventing something like this. Okay, let's just take one more problem before we come to the expiration of this episode. Thank you. Hey there, subscribe to my channel and also press this bell icon. Okay, 
finally, let us conclude with this last question. In a school, there are 95 students, 40 like economics, 35 like math, and 30 like AUSA, 7 like math and economics, X like economics and AUSA, and nobody like math and AUSA. What is the value of X? Okay, so let's exemplify this by solving it. In a school, there are 95 students, which means our universal set is uh, 95. We shall use E for economics, M for math, and H for AUSA. So number of economics is uh, 40, we are told. Uh, 35 like math, so number of mathematics, we are told that they are 35 in number. Again, 30 like economics, uh, 30 like AUSA, so number of AUSA is equivalent to 30. Then again, we are told that 7 like math and economics, so number of math and economics is equivalent to 7. Um, X like economics and AUSA. So number of economics and the AUSA is equivalent to X, like we are told. And uh, nobody like math and AUSA. Nobody like math and AUSA. So number of math intersection AUSA is an empty set. An empty set is set with no member, so you have to represent it properly. Um, then after this uh, thing we've done by listing down the members of a various set, we have to represent it on a Venn uh, diagram. So let's draw the Venn diagram. This time around, we are told that nobody is liking math and economics. Therefore, you have, you have to make math and economics to be far apart from each other they should not intersect at all. So instead of drawing it like the previous example we solved, you have to do it this way. See what I'm doing here? So mass and the economics should be far apart from, uh, mass and AUSA should be far apart from each other since nobody like the two subjects. So you see how I separated mass and economics? They are not intersecting at all. Then the other mass and AUSA, the other one I will now call it uh, economics. Remember, our universal set is uh, 95. Okay, for economics and AUSA, economics and AUSA, we said it is X. Economics and AUSA is X. So I'll put X there. I have math and economics is 7. So math and economics is 7. You write 7 here. Then nobody for math and AUSA. That is why they are far apart from uh, each other. Okay, then uh, let's go begin with this math. Math, they are 35. So I'm not going to just write 35 here. 7 is already part of math. So remove 7 from 35, you shall be getting a 28. For economics, economics are 14 number. Two things falls into economics, 7 and X. First of all, since economics is 14 number, remove 7 from 40, you have 33. So we have 33 minus x. We have to subtract this x again. So we write 33 minus x for economics. Then for AUSA, AUSA, they are 30 in number. The student that likes AUSA as a subject are 30 in number. And only x falls into AUSA. So it will be uh, 30 minus x. Okay, having done that, the sum of everything inside this uh, universal set gives us a uh, 95. So So you can write that 28 plus 7 plus 33 minus x plus this x plus 30 minus x must be 95. That is the universal set. The sum of everything there must be 95. Uh, 7 plus 33 is 40. 40 plus 28 is uh, 68. 68 plus 30 is 98. Then you go for x, minus x plus x is 0, it has gone. Then remaining minus x that is here equals uh, 95. So minus x is equivalent to 95 minus 98.
So minus x will now give us 95 minus 98 is minus 3. So minus we cancel minus, x will give us 3. So we have got the value of x for them. From this x, you can answer every other question they want you to get. For example, if I want to get outside only, outside only is just 30 minus x. So it's 30 minus 3, which will give me 27. If I want economics only, economics only is 33 minus x, which is 3. So 33 minus 3 will give me 30, and math only is uh, 28. Um, at this point, I'm stopping here for this episode. Expect more videos soon. If you enjoyed what you've watched, kindly hit the red button to subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get notification whenever a new video is uploaded. Thank you so much.